Today in the news, we discuss the RTX 4000 series' release, Intel's Raptor Lake, and their future process note. What's up guys, I'm Snows, and this is your boot sequence. But first, let me thank Jawa for sponsoring today's news. Jawa is a marketplace where you can list or buy computer parts like motherboards, CPUs, and GPUs. They offer the lowest fees when compared to other places like eBay or Amazon. It's 3% for payment processing, 3.5% for platform fees, and it's capped at $50. So if you're selling, you can save hundreds in cash. You can also request whole desktop PCs from their verified sellers. You can take a look at this one, for example. They also sell notebooks and consoles, so visit jawa.gg now. The link is in the description down below. Let's get started with Nvidia. So obviously we've been covering pretty much everything when it comes to the next generation of GPUs. Every core count that was rumored, any TDP numbers that came up, but I've never really discussed the uh, possible release windows of the RTX 4000 series. That's because it was pretty much all over the place with different leakers giving us different date ranges. So I decided to wait a little bit until the dust settled and everyone pretty much agreed with each other on the same time frame. The early leaks pointed at a split release for the three top tier cards, the RTX 4090, 4080, and 4070. So each of the releases would be spaced out by a month, so that's 4090 in uh, August, 4080 in September, and 4070 after that. Those are all of the launches for the uh, calendar year 2022. The 4060 would be a CES 2023 launch, and of course, anything else would come after that. Now though, the consensus seems to be that those release dates have been pushed by a month. So the 4090 would come in September, 4080 in October, and the 4070 in November. The 4060 launch event would still be at CES. Now of course, these release dates don't mean that the cards would be announced a month apart from each other. Just like the RTX 3000 series and the 2000 series before that, the top three cards could all be announced at the same time with the time frame likely being in August. So yeah, there you go. An update on the 4000 series release dates. Moving on, let's talk about Intel. The 13th generation of their core CPUs is right around the corner, and with the leaks that have been popping out, it looks like a beast. The latest of those leaks is a Sys software benchmark for the i9-13900. This should be a lower clocked, non-overclockable version of the chip. This is actually a preview chip that was benched, so uh, likely an engineering sample too. And it is clocked at 3.7 gigahertz for the performance cores and 2.76 gigahertz for the efficient cores. In terms of core counts, we're still looking at 8 P cores and 16 E cores, so the same P count as uh, Alder Lake, but double the E cores. If we look at the benchmark results, it's pretty impressive. In what Sys Software calls native performance, the new chip is pretty killer with anywhere from 1.3 times faster in a couple of benches to two times faster on the whetstone double test. Now, obviously, those are extremely specific benchmarks. If we look at the Vector SIMD native tests, the 13900 barely edges out its predecessor. But you have to keep in mind that this CPU is clocked way lower. The 12900 that it replaces can reach up to 5 gigahertz on its P cores and 3.8 gigahertz on its E cores. This one is running at 3.7 and 2.76 respectively. You know, we've had the core counts info down for a pretty long time. And I really never stopped to ask, why? Why would Intel double the E cores instead of adding more P cores? I mean, P cores is all AMD is doing and it seems to be working just great for them. Is Intel just trying to favor people who multitask a lot while doing some big tasks? I mean, that's what they've been saying for Raptor Lake, but wouldn't that put them at a disadvantage against Zen 4? I guess we'll have to wait and see. Oh, and a little update on that story. It looks like Sys Software has scraped the article they wrote with all of the testing. I guess probably because they shouldn't have posted that information in the first place. Thank God I got a screenshot of the web page before it disappeared. If we look further in Intel's future, we have Meteor Lake. Now, we don't really have any concrete specs on that generation specifically, but Intel did share some interesting information on what they've been able to uh, achieve. I guess specifically what they've been able to achieve on their uh, manufacturing process called Intel 4. So with the uh, Intel 4 process node, we're looking at either a 21.5% increase in clock speeds at the same power consumption as the uh, Intel 7 node, which is what we're on right now with Alder Lake and Raptor Lake, or we're looking at a 40% reduction 
reduction in power consumption at the same frequency. That power reduction is absolutely insane until you realize that it means that the 12900K, for example, would still consume 170 watts. In any case, the Intel 4 process looks good. I just hope that Intel can actually take it to market on time because it took them a hell of a long time to get down to the uh, 10 nanometer process. Sorry, I mean Intel 7 process. They really just changed the name so that we would stop associating the time it took for 10 nanometers to uh, come to production with Intel 7. And honestly, it kind of worked on me. Anyways, guys, that is pretty much it for today's catch up. Hopefully you've enjoyed. Drop a like if you liked it, a comment if you want to talk about today's stories. As usual, you can click right here to see the latest video right here to subscribe to the channel. Stay frosted, my dudes, and I'll see you on the next one. Take care. We stay the same. We stay the same. We stay the same. We stay the same.